Welcome into game night in the region on the Region Sports Network, streaming live on the internet at regionsports.com, facebook.com slash regionsports, and youtube.com slash regionsports. We come to you tonight from Whiting High School as the Region Sports Network presents the Whiting Oilers taking on the Highland Trojans at a boys' hoops showdown. I'm Scott Sudikoff. I'll have the play-by-play -play for tonight's broadcast, and joining me with the color analysis is Isaiah Gransberry. Good evening, Isaiah. And we're hoping for a fun one here tonight between Highland and Whiting. And we're only three games. This is the, just the third game of uh, the season. Obviously a non-league matchup for these two schools. And so early on in the year, teams are still kind of finding their footing, working things out, figuring out what plays they like to run, and certainly coaches trying to figure out what rotation they like the best. So uh, we might see some of that here today in terms of how these two teams will match up. And you're right. Um, that's the unique part about the beginning of the high school basketball season. Anything can happen. And that's uh, the great part about in Indiana, you know, you get the same feeling in November or in December as you would in March. And we're going to see it here tonight. Two teams are going to be playing hard and look for a good ball game. The Trojans are 0-2 on the season. They lost their opener to River Forest, 59-54 and then fell against Crown Point, 84-39 to out of the Northwest Crossroads Conference. Meanwhile, Whiting, they are 1-1. One one. They won their opener over Hammond, Science, and Tech, 80-57. to Then they fell to Hanover Central, 56-45. to And so obviously two games into the year, you look at the stats, and, you know, it's, it's a small sample size. We look at Highland uh, leading players thus far. You have Rico Maldonado, who's made four three-pointers on the year. He's shooting 33% from three, averaging seven points through the first two games of the year. And then uh, Kiki Zikavika, he has uh, played just one game, but he had 23 points and 16 rebounds in that game. So he's leading the way in terms of scoring and rebounding uh, for this Highland team. When you look at Whiting, Sean Donaldson certainly stands out. 20 points per game over the first two games shooting over 65%, including five of seven from three. He's also dished out nine assists per game in the first two games of the year. And then also Nolan Toth, who has uh, made eight of 15 three-pointers this year, averaging a double double in the first two games, 16 points and 10 and a half rebounds. So, I mean, you look at, again, small sample size. You look at that and you see, you know, it appears on the paper that Whiting has a couple of players that, will stand out as compared to Highland, but, you know, it, it, it all depends on how they match up on the floor, of course. And uh, looking at overall season numbers, Whiting in the two games averaging 60 points, Highland averaging 45 and a half per game. But again, it's non-conference, very early in the year, and the team's just trying to find their way. Exactly, and one name you did not mention is Nick Johnson. The junior big man for Highland had a phenomenal season on the gridiron playing defensive end and wide receiver for the Trojans. And he missed a lot of last basketball season for the Trojans as well. So he's a hungry individual, got a, gets lots of rebounds and very hard to defend in the post. So I'd keep a close eye on him today. Uh, I know his stats on the season, they're, they're pretty low, but he's easing his way back into it. It's been over a year since he's played basketball. So looking for a big game from him tonight. So that's our matchup here today. Highland and Whiting about 10 minutes away from starting as the JV game went a little bit long. So tip-off scheduled for about 7-10 here this evening. We'll take a break for now, but when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll get you the starting lineups and talk a bit more about this game and we'll, uh, we'll zoom our way towards the opening tip-off of this one. Highland and Whiting, you're watching the game. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Start or advance your career at TNB Tube Company. At TNB, employees are more than just a number. They are a valuable part of the success of TNB Tube Company and make an impact every day. Located just a short drive away from Chicago, TNB Tube Company offers benefits such as tuition reimbursement and a community-like work atmosphere. To learn more about joining the growing team at TNB Tube Company, visit tbtube.com/careers. Did you know? 
They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Hi, I'm Crowd Company's Lantern Man. You never know when an accident can happen, and they're usually unpredictable. So before you make another move, make sure you and your family have reliable and affordable insurance coverage. Follow me to Crowd Agency. I'll be here late tonight to take care of all of your insurance needs. Help Crowd Company's Lantern Man. I'm your insurance superhero. Let Lantern Man illuminate your way to Crowd Agency. Open till 9 p.m. for your convenience in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Attention homeowners, ready to start your next project? Need to pay off your debt? Refinance your home? Unlock the value of your home with a Centier Bank no-fee home equity loan or home equity line of credit. Stop by a local Centier branch today or visit us on the web at centier.com forward slash home equity. Terms and conditions subject to change without notice, subject to credit approval. Centier Bank, NMLS number 408076, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Since 2000, Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure.
Legion Sports Network, the only game in town. All right, welcome back here to Whiting. Scott Sudikoff and Isaiah Gransberry here with you. Game night in the region and, well, getting ready for this one. They're putting us on camera. I'm not sure why. I, I'm not prepared to be on camera. Uh, I did not agree to this, but all right, here we are. Uh, so, Isaiah, you know, you've talked about Indiana. I, you, you grew up around here, so you understand uh, kind of uh, what this all means. Yeah, and in Indiana high school basketball, it's important all year round, you know, from and it used to be a one class system. Now it's a four class system and that's really uh, stay really equalized the playing field now for a lot of uh, schools, including these two right here. We have a two A school in Whiten High School, which is just about seven hundred students roughly, and then Highland High School, which is just around nine hundred, they're a three A school. So it's a good matchup between two teams looking to get an early test for each other. Uh, before they hit conference play later in December. All right, it's time to name the TNB Tube Company starting lineups for both teams in tonight's game. Brought to you by TNB Tube Company. Start and advance your career at tbtube.com. All right, let's start with the visiting team, the Highland Trojans. As I mentioned, they come in 0 and 2 on the year. They have the 5'10", Eric Onahan in the starting lineup. He's shooting 44% to begin the season, averaging five points per game. He's joined by Kiki Zekavica, mentioned in the one game he has played. The 5'10 uh, players had 23 points and uh, 16 rebounds. Also in the starting lineup, 5'10", Xander Eisen. Eisen in two games has scored Four and a half points per game and grabbed three rebounds. Also in the starting lineup, Rico Maldonado, five foot seven. Mentioned he has made four three pointers in 12 attempts this year, averaging seven points per game over the first two games of the season. Rounding out the starting five, Isaiah was talking about him earlier. Six foot three, Nick Johnson. He's gotten back into basketball this year, a couple of games. He's a two of seven from the field and scored a total of four points, but has grabbed six rebounds per game thus far. Onahan, Zekavica, Eisen, Maldonado, and Johnson, the starting five for the Highland Trojans. And now let's take a look at the Whiting Oilers coming in with their one and one record. Five foot eight sophomore Sean Donaldson shooting 65% from the field, 20 points and nine assists per game to start the year. Six foot two senior Nolan Toth. He's made eight three pointers thus far on the year. He's eight for 15, and he's averaging 16 points and 10 and a half rebounds. Luke Zorich, a five foot nine senior. He's played one of the two games thus far, and in that one game, he was four of six from the field with 12 points, a rebound, and two assists. Six foot two junior Nick Davenport. He's played now, he will be playing, and his third game and the third game of the year for Whiting. He's shooting 50% overall, six and a half points per game, five and a half rebounds per contest. And rounding out the starting five is Joe Gendrius, a six foot three senior in the two games thus far, two and a half points, four and a half rebounds for him. Donaldson, Toth, Zorich, Davenport, and Gendrius. The starting five for the one and one Whiting Oilers, the Highland Trojans at 0 and 2 so far on the year. Time is about to expire on the clock here in the pregame, and so I'm not sure if they have a national anthem queued up for this game or not, but they will probably introduce the starting lineup. So give us a chance to take one final break before the start of this one. Whiting and Highland coming up next. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hanger Insurance Group in Crown Point is passionate about providing a premier service insurance agency featuring customized coverage and meaningful relationships. They understand that you've built a life and they want to help you protect it. From home to life insurance, they offer a wide variety of coverage to fit your needs. From choosing a plan to filing claims, Hanger Insurance Group agents are ready to help. Stop in for a quote at 950 South Court Street in Crown Point or visit them online at hangerinsurancegroup.com. Protect what you love. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. 
Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. You never know when an accident can happen, and they're usually unpredictable. So before you make another move, make sure you and your family have reliable and affordable insurance coverage. Follow me to Crowell Agency. I'll be here late tonight to take care of all of your insurance needs. At Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Let Lantern Man illuminate your way to Crowell Agency. Open till 9 p.m. for your convenience in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Start or advance your career at TNB Tube Company. At TNB, employees are more than just a number. They are a valuable part of the success of TNB Tube Company and make an impact every day. Located just a short drive away from Chicago, TNB Tube Company offers benefits such as tuition reimbursement and a community-like work atmosphere. To learn more about joining the growing team at TNB Tube Company, visit tbtube.com/careers. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free car Welcome back here to Whiting High School. The starting lineups being introduced to the crowd here as we get ready for Highland and Whiting. Scott Sudikoff, Isaiah Gransberry here with you. Looking out at the official starting five. It's the, what we had for Highland coming in to Onahan, Zakovica, Ison, Maldonado, and Johnson. Sean Donaldson, Nolan Toth being introduced right now. And Luke Zorich, Nick Davenport, and Joe Gendreas. The starting five for Whiting. And obviously Isaiah will look to see as this game starts off how the two teams, you know, there's always that, that feeling out process for teams uh, early on in the year in non-league, non-league, uh, in a non-league setting. And you mentioned it. I mean, these teams aren't as familiar with each other as uh, conference opponents would be. So well, I'm sure we'll see uh, a slower pace for f first quarter, and then things will probably pick up as time progresses. So obviously Whiting in the home white uniforms with the green letters and numbers. Highland in the blue with the letters and numbers also in blue, outlined in uh, yellow or gold, whatever you want to call it officially. Davenport losing the opening tip to Nick Johnson, and the Trojans have the basketball first. Looks like Whiting starting off in a 3-2 zone. Yeah, Donaldson playing at the top of that 3-2 zone defensively. This is Ison on the left wing. Right corner, the three ball, nothing but net for Kiki Zekovica. That's confidence right there. Great opportunity to catch and shoot and he took advantage of it. So Highland on the board first. Donaldson driving and that'll be a blocking foul. So Donaldson quickly attacking the rib and drawing an early foul on the Trojans and the basket went in as well. Didn't catch that part but it does go in and a chance for a three point play. Not sure who they, I'm not sure who took the foul. I, I guess they don't announce that over the PA system. So we'll try our best to keep track of who the fouls are on, but don't know. Free throw was good. Kiki wide open in the corner again. Look for him to be ready to shoot as soon as he catches it. Odahan. One dribble, bounce to the corner. Great patience by Highland. And now that was Zekaviku flashed wide open, gets a second chance, and he draws a foul. Great patience by Highland on that possession. They moved the ball around, got multiple wing-to-wing -wing or passes. 
toward the uh, to look for a great shot and ultimately got a foul out of it. Foul was on Gendrus. And Zekapika has all four points now for the Trojans. He's already taken 16 free throws and he's played a game in a minute on the season. So it was one for two, but an offensive rebound for the Trojans for Maldonado. Now Zekavica passes it to the cutting Johnson who lays it up and in. Nick Johnson, efficient in the paint. Look for him to be there all night long. 6-3 start for the Trojans here in the first quarter. Toth has it knocked away and then deflected off of him, causing the turnover was Eric Onahan. Great defense right there, keeping your hands active and looking to just knock it out, intimidate the defender. Onahan into the corner, Zakavica made the three from the other corner, and a loose ball foul is whistled on Highland. I believe on Maldonado. And another foul on the Trojans as the ball was being inbounded. This foul on Ison, so that's three team fouls now on the Trojans. And we have not yet played two minutes in the first quarter. As the Trojans try to trap in the backcourt and it leads to a steal. Maldonado inside the three-point line. And now back up top into the hands of Onahan. Johnson flashes open in the corner, guarded by Gendrus. Pass in the lane is tipped away, knocked away nicely by Nick Davenport. But turned right back over. Trojans on the fast break. Zekovica taking the feed. From Onahan draws the foul. It goes on Luke Zorich. Why to attack the basket? Another good defensive stop by the Trojans, and they run well in transition, getting to the free throw line again early on. So Zekovica is already one for two at the free throw line, has four of the six Trojan points. He's back there now. Good start for Highland in this road contest, up by four. Free throws seem like they're going to be pretty important today. Two for two. Six points for Zekovica. Donaldson quickly pushing it ahead, leaves it off nicely for Genderis. He lays it up and in. Way to push the floor. He single-handedly broke that press right there. Donaldson averaging nine assists for the first two games of the year. Showing why. Johnson puts it down on the floor, misses it short, grabbing the offensive rebound, Zekovica. Trojans reset the offense against this 3-2 zone. Could possibly call it a 2-1-2, but Donaldson comes up to the top of the key and knocks it away, creates the turnover. Toth driving, offensive foul, no basket, wave it off. Now that's something coaches love to see. Turn it over on offense, something you don't want to see, but then hustles back on defense and gets in position. Xander Eisen, great way to take a charge right there. So it stays 8-5 in favor of the Trojans, and they have the basketball with Eisen taking it across half court. Couple of substitutions getting set to come on for the Oilers. Giovanni Garo and Jeremiah Allard will be coming on. That is out of bounds. Last touch by Whiting, so the Trojans will get it back. Comes Garo, a five foot eight junior, and Allard, a six foot senior. Going out of the game, Donaldson and Gendris. Maldonado thought about going down low with it to Johnson. You can see Garo is shading Seems toward like Johnson. 
They're looking for an angle to get the ball into Johnson, as they do. Great kick out. He ends up being a triple team there momentarily, and knocked out of bounds by Zach Vikas. It'll be Whiting ball with 4.23 to go first quarter, and Donaldson right back into the ball game here, replacing Luke Zorich. And I'm sure that triple team is something we're going to see all game long. The coaches know who Nick Johnson is. Donaldson trying to triple around three different defenders. Ice it all by himself will lay it up and in. Donaldson needs a bit more help. Try to break that pressure. They break the pressure nicely here, but a better defensive play by Nick Johnson. Onahan. Bounces into the lane. Johnson, kick out. Maldonado steps to the free throw line extended. Misses it too strong. And the rebound by Garrow. Gets it to Donaldson. Donaldson has three of the five Oiler points thus far. Zekovica has six of the ten for the Trojans. Offensive foul. They call that an illegal screen. Yep, they did. On Allard. That's four team fouls on the Oilers. 3.25 to go in the first, 10-5. Highland by five. 0-2 on the year. Whiting, 1-1. One one. Dangerous pass, got through. Now it's back to Zekovica. Misses the three short. Donaldson looks ahead. Pulls up left of the lane, skips it. Down the baseline goes Davenport. He got bumped, but just called out of bounds. So far, seeing Highland playing pretty high-level defense thus far. They haven't been flawless offensively, but they've gotten really good shots. And their defense has created offense for them early on in this game in a couple possessions. So look forward to seeing more. Zekovica with the floater. Great drive right there. Way to identify baseline in that 3-2 zone. That bottom guy has a big responsibility. He's got eight points now. Donaldson misses it. Taken off the floor by Onahan. Zekovica drives the hop step. There are two defenders. Can't get it over the rim. Donaldson, it's two on two here. And Donaldson loses it against Onahan, who was setting up to take a charge. Donaldson obviously trying to avoid that contact with the sidestep of him and lost control. Yeah, it looked like it might have been an angle part there from the referees. Uh, nobody's perfect in life, so charge it to the game. I'm happy there's no replay. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. Enough of that in sports. 12-5 Highland, 2.05 to go. First quarter. That three is good for Onahan. Second three-pointer of the game for the Trojans. Highland heating up here early. Great three by Onahan, being ready to shoot. They were only 21% from three in the first two games of the year. Seven of 33 as a team. Oilers looking for the answer from Zorich. No good. Zekovica, kick out, Onahan. Gets to the elbow, fading off one foot. Johnson had a hand on the offensive rebound, but it's out of bounds off of him. It'll be Oilers ball. Gendrus coming back in for the Oilers. And the full court pressure. And that is a foul on Blackman, who is trying to trap there underneath the basket. That's one thing about the pressure. Sometimes you pressure a little too hard, and you're going to give up fouls. So that's one the coach, he's probably not too worried about. 1-2-2, two, two, full court press here. Immediately go to trap in the corner. Zorich, good pass across the lane. Gendrus couldn't finish, but the follow-up is good, and the foul for Jeremiah Allard. So in a 
important bucket there. Onaham will check out. And into the game is Alonzo Godinez. And Allard at the free throw line for the first time this season. Makes the three-point play. 15 to 8, coming up on a minute left in the first quarter. Blackman. Zakavika. They go back and forth against the zone. Now in the corner, Godinez. Blackman bounces to the corner, Maldonado. Up fakes, got Gendrus in the air, but he shot it off the side of the backboard. Off balance shot right there, fading away. Probably not the best shot to take on the baseline. Donaldson, Gender is setting a screen now, rolling to the hoop. Donaldson bumped by Blackman and the foul called. So the second foul on Blackman. And I have them for six team fouls. On the board, they have them for five. Donaldson for three, short. He fell down along with the defender, Ison, who gets the basketball. Behind the back, they were able to get it to Gananez. Isaiah Reed is out there for the Trojans, made that behind the back effort. They leave Maldonado open. Donaldson secures the rebound. I think the Oilers will take the last shot here, they will. Down 15 to eight, first quarter. Donaldson waiting, now makes the move with four seconds. Kicks it out for a three, no good from Zorich. And after the buzzer, the shot by Toth does not go in anyways. And the first quarter is in the books here with the score. Highland 15, Whiting 8. We'll be right back with the second quarter in a couple of minutes. You're watching, the ga you're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Scott Sudikoff, Isaiah Gransberry back with you. Second quarter about to begin. It's Highland 15, Whiting 8. Eight first quarter points for Kiki Zekovica for the Trojans. Three points each for Donaldson and Allard for the Oilers. Donaldson a three out of the timeout. He knocks it down, and now he's got six points, and the Oilers within four. Looked like the coach out of the timeout, they just said, hey, we're going to isolate uh, Donaldson, and do your thing, and that's what, exactly what he did right there. Great shot. Gonadez passes out of the corner for Ison. Maldonado swings it back out top. Zekovica with Ison. Again, this 3-2 zone for Whiting. Lobbed to Maldonado in the corner. Trojans being patient. They find the open man, Gonanez, in the corner for three. It's a long two instead. Good shot, though, by right Gonanez. All the Highland Trojans have been ready to shoot in the corners right there. So that's a uh, salute to them today. Five different players have scored now for the Trojans. 17 to 11. They lead to Donaldson. That was a bad pass. Somehow it got through to him, and he makes a second consecutive three-pointer. He started the day five for seven from three. He's made two in a row here and also grabs a rebound. Three-point game. 
Donaldson, the crossover through the legs. Pulls up from eight feet, doesn't get the roll. Tapped out to Zorich. Second chance, Gendrus hits it. And the run here from down seven to within one in less than two minutes of the second quarter. Godinez. Tekovica just takes it, bounces out, and Gendrus was fouled over the back by Isaiah Reed. Looks nope. like Highland's backing off of their full court press right now. Wonder if they're gonna set up into a zone sometime soon. So the sixth team foul. Bo Harbin has come on for the Oilers. A five foot 11 junior. Whiting looking for its first lead of the day. Donaldson laying it off for Allard and it's swiped away. Great move and great dish by Donaldson. His court vision is elite. Turned over by the Trojans and now the Oilers have another chance to take the lead for the first time. Trying to get it to Donaldson, cutting. Stolen by Zekovica. Bounces it to the wide open Nick Johnson for two. He's got four points. Nick Johnson inside again. Just over three minutes gone by in the second quarter. It was 15 to eight Highland after the first. Donaldson made a couple of three pointers in this quarter and now has a chance at the free throw line with a pair. Foul was on Ison. I have him now for his second foul, seventh team foul. And Donald's into the charity stripe. There's five of seven. Now six of eight on the year, making one earlier. Davenport back in for the Oilers. Onahan returning for the Trojans. Donaldson stands at, uh, listed at five foot eight. Sometimes you get an extra inch maybe on the listing. Inch or two, you know, it's basketball courtesy. I don't get that courtesy though. I'm, I'm listed my exact height on our rosters. <laughs> Second free throw is good for Donaldson. He's now got 10 points. His team down two though. Onahan. Zekovic in the corner. That's where he made his three to begin the game. He's missed a couple since. Quick pass looking for Johnson, but a lot of traffic. And that's what that zone defense wants to do is that man up top in the middle is sliding down in the paint and making sure they double team the post players. Loose ball out of bounds. Euler ball. The box out by Onahan. He put his body on the line right there. Unfortunately, he didn't get it, but a great battle. Jose Torres is checked in for the Oilers, a 6'2 senior. Bounce in for him, and he's fouled. It'll be a one and one. And the foul on Johnson, eighth team foul. So Torres will go to the line. Looking for his first point of the season. And Whiting has not yet led in this game. Trailed by as many as nine in the first quarter. Free throw, no good. And Onahan will push it forward. Goes all the way to the hoop and draws the foul. A little bit out of control, but Got his way towards the backboard and go to the free throw line. Out of control is right, but he also did a great job of leaning his body into the defender as he double clutches, and that's what drew that foul right there. And Highland is back to the line again. Two for three at the line this year. Made his first three-pointer of the season. 
in the first quarter. Now has four points. Maldonado is checked back in, replacing Godinez for the Trojans. Onahan makes a pair. Four-point Trojan lead halfway through the second quarter. Donaldson working on a 10-point night thus far. Good feed to Toth. Can't get it to go. Torres had it knocked away from behind. Right. Zekovica. That's a basket's good. It's a blocking foul on Donaldson. Shaking out his left arm as well. May have hit his elbow on the floor. You were about to say? No, I was going to say uh, that last possession uh, where Highland was on defense, Whiting identified Highland's overpressure of the ball and called him out on it. So I could look for them to run that play a couple more times today. Basket count. It's just one free throw there. Everybody confused for a moment. 11 points now for Zekovica. He leads the Trojans. Donaldson has 10 for the Oilers. But that three-point play pushes the lead back up to seven. Donaldson step back three, front iron. Johnson with good inside position, grabs the rebound and got fouled. And free throws coming here, one and one. Lots of fouls in this game, and that's something you see early on in the season. Players aren't as in shape as they would be in March, and, you know, just still trying to fill out their basketball skill sets against each other. So I'm not surprised to see uh, this many fouls early on. Johnson at the line. He's got four points tonight. This is that one off the left side of the iron. Donaldson with a head of steam. Finds the open man in the corner. Zorich missing the three, and then a rebounding foul on the Oilers. So more free throws. There's a third foul now on Torres in very limited time here in the second quarter. He comes out of the game, and Johnson is shooting. Onahan maybe trying to sneak in there to shoot the free throws. Maybe the better of the two free throw shooters. One and one. Ball kept alive and Johnson gets the offensive rebound. Throws it up off the window. No. Gets his own rebound. Man, it rolls around and in. Johnson is a beast inside and he's showing it right there. Looks like he's getting back into basketball shape pretty quickly. And now that lead up to nine once again. Donaldson. Space at the free throw line, spins out. Onahan pushes, pulls up from 15. Off the back iron, rebound Toth. Corner three, it's good. Nick Davenport with a big shot for the Oilers. But a lay in the other way for Zekovica, he now has 13. Zekovica playing his heart out early on. Donaldson tied up on the way to the hoop. He was fouled. Called on the floor, so it's one and one. The foul on Zekovica, his first. Donaldson to the free throw line. He's had a three-point play in this game. And a couple of... Three-pointers from beyond the arc as well. Ten total points. This is short. Batted up and in by Jeremiah Aller. Just got his hands on it and volleyballed it through. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit of muscle. 28-22. Aller just got five points. Zakavika spins around and in. Sixteen points now for Kiki Zekovica. Offensive uh, put back there by Gendrus, drawing the foul. Plenty of those, as we've talked about. 
Zekavika cooking it up in the corners. Wow. And Gendrus is at the line here. It's a two-shot foul. Ten team fouls. It's 15-8 Highland after the first quarter. The lead nine right now, the largest it's been. Remember, the Oilers were within one and had a chance to take the lead on two occasions, not able to do so. They have not led yet here tonight. They've been playing hard, though, and they're just a couple baskets away. I mean, we all know how basketball works. It's a game of possession by possession, honestly. This will stay with the Trojans with a minute 46 to go, second quarter. Highland, by the way, plays again tomorrow. They play at North Newton tomorrow. Tipped by Donaldson, and Davin, or excuse me, Toth comes away with it. Donaldson doesn't use the screen, just fires the three, and the putback, Gendrus draws another foul. Andrews, though, having some struggles at the free throw line. I'm going to say it's uh, pretty safe to say that this game will come down to free throws. <laughs> Goes 0 for 2, rebound by Nikki Dinacola, who picked up that foul. Heading towards the final minute. Of the first half, Donaldson on the run. Zekovica, the one back. He moves out of the way and lets Donaldson take the basket instead of possibly picking up a second foul. Donaldson, the bucket, leads to a timeout call by Highland here. One minute, seven seconds to go in the second quarter. 31-24, Highland will step aside quickly and be right back. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? Wow. They'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strack and Van Till, now you know. Welcome back, minute six to go, second quarter, 31-24, Highland leading. Trojans just calling a timeout after the bucket by Donaldson. And now Donaldson looking for two more. Rolls off the front of the rim, Toth has the offensive rebound, leaves it off for Zorich, cutting to the hoop, and he scores his first bucket, 31-26. Great pickoff by Highland. I mean, great pickoff by Whiting. And Highland, they're going to have to shorten their passes if they want to keep Whiting out of this game. 35 seconds to go in the first half. Trojans led by seven after one, have led by as many as nine. Up by five right now. Whiting turning up the pressure on their end as well. Yeah, extending that zone out. More between the rings here. Dinicola, good move, misses. Batted around off of the Oilers. Highland ball with 10 seconds left. And with Whiting extending that zone, that middle is going to be wide open. Uh, we heard multiple rumbles from the crowd and the coaches uh, saying, get the ball in the middle. So look for them to do that if Whiting extends their pressure once more. Black middle inbound the ball. Ison, six seconds. Zekovica wants it. Ison will drive and miss it short. Did a call the rebound, kicks it out, and not able to get the shot off. Was Blackman, and that ends the first half. So the Trojans, as I mentioned, led it by seven after one, 15 to eight. The Oilers put up 18 points in the second quarter, but 
The Trojan lead is still five, 31-26 at halftime. We'll take a break and be back with more here on, you're watching game night on the Regent Sports Network, the only game in town. Start or advance your career at TNB Tube Company. At TNB, employees are more than just a number. They are a valuable part of the success of TNB Tube Company and make an impact every day. Located just a short drive away from Chicago, TMB Tube Company offers benefits such as tuition reimbursement and a community-like work atmosphere. To learn more about joining the growing team at TNB Tube Company, visit tbtube.com slash careers. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Attention homeowners, ready to start your next project? Need to pay off your debt? Refinance your home? Unlock the value of your home with a Centier Bank no-fee home equity loan or home equity line of credit. Stop by a local Centier branch today or visit us on the web at centier.com forward slash home equity. Terms and conditions subject to change without notice, subject to credit approval. Centier Bank, NMLS number 408076, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Since 2000, Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Hanger Insurance Group in Crown Point is passionate about providing a premier service insurance agency featuring customized coverage and meaningful relationships. They understand that you've built a life and they want to help you protect it. From home to life insurance, they offer a wide variety of coverage to fit your needs. From choosing a plan to filing claims, Hanger Insurance Group agents are ready to help. Stop in for a quote at 950 South Court Street in Crown Point or visit them online at hangerinsurancegroup.com. Protect what you love. Did you know... Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? 
Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till. Now you know. Hi, I'm Crowd Company's Lantern Man. You never know when an accident can happen, and they're usually unpredictable. So before you make another move, make sure you and your family have reliable and affordable insurance coverage. Follow me to Crowl Agency. I'll be here late tonight to take care of all of your insurance needs. At Crowl Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Let Lantern Man illuminate your way to Crowl Agency. Open till 9 p.m. for your convenience in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. Welcome back here. Welcome back to Whiting, where Highland leads Whiting by a score of 31 to 26. Highland led 15 to 8 after one. Whiting outscored them 18 to 16 in the second quarter, but again, a five point lead for the Trojans. They did lead by as many as nine in this game. Let's go through the scoring totals for Highland 16 first half points for Kiki Zekavica, including a pair of three-pointers, and he made four free throws in the first half. Six points for Nick Johnson, all on uh, shots inside the paint near the rim. Five points for Eric Onahan, as he knocked down a three-pointer and made a couple of free throws. Two points each for Alonzo Godinez and Xander Ison, and that adds up to the, at least I hope it does, adds up to the 31 that the Trojans have in this game. For Whiting, leading scorer, no surprise, Sean Donaldson with 12 points. He knocked down a couple of threes. Also had a three-point play mixed in over the course of his action. Five points for Jeremiah Allard off the bench. Four points for Joe Gendris. Three points for Nick Davenport on a three-pointer. Two points for Luke Zorich. And that rounds out the scoring for the Oilers as uh, that was 26 points. They scored 18 in the second, 8 in the first. 31-26 is the score in favor of Highland. They are 0-2 on the season. Whiting at 1-1 one one in this non-league matchup. Highland out of the Northwest Crossroads Conference. Whiting from the Greater South Shore Conference. So again, the score at halftime. It is Highland 31, Whiting 26. Halftime a couple of minutes from wrapping up, so we'll take one final break during halftime and come back and have the third quarter for you. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, You'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more. Visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and coat upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Attention homeowners, ready to start your next project? Need to pay off your debt? 
refinance your home, unlock the value of your home with a Centier Bank no fee home equity loan or home equity line of credit. Stop by a local Centier branch today or visit us on the web at centier.com forward slash home equity. Terms and conditions subject to change without notice, subject to credit approval. Centier Bank, NMLS number 408076, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Scott Sudikoff, Isaiah Gransberry back with you at Whiting High School where it is Highland 31, Whiting 26. Second half about to begin here. As the team's back out on the floor, Highland will have the basketball first. Onahan, Eisen, Maldonado, Zekovica, and Johnson, the original starting five, are out there. Looks like the original starting five as well for the Oilers. That is going to be out of bounds, last touched by Whiting. So Highland will keep the basketball. Highland's going to have to limit the turnovers this half. And starting with this first possession, definitely don't want to start off with one. Onahan fumbles it away, and the Oilers will have it. And after just stepping over half court, traveling, Nolan Toth. So the ball goes right back to Highland. Just underway in the third quarter. Onahan. Ison goes back to Onahan. Zekovica calls for it, takes the three, and makes the three. His third trifecta of the ball game, and he now has 19 points. He is playing with the utmost confidence in this game, and I look forward to seeing how he finishes. Bad pass by Davenport, stolen by Onahan. Pass to the quarter, Maldonado just saving it inbounds, and then saving the possession was Ison. So the bounce is going the Trojans' way right now. Maldonado. Zekovica sneaking down the baseline. Open there for a moment. Onahan will back it out. Donaldson going to come out and pressure a little bit here. Johnson in the paint. He traveled before he kicked it out. I think Johnson was surprised on nobody guarding him in the middle of the floor. He could have floated to the rim right there. I'm sure he'll be taking advantage of that opportunity next time around. Pressure a little bit there from the Trojans. Not too tough to break. Gendrus got fouled as that pass got to him. No, what, what do they call there? I think they called the foul, but nobody, no official came over and gave who the foul was on. Toth, Donaldson, free throw line J. Got it. That's smooth. You might practice that a couple times a day. A curl to the elbow. 14 points for him. Maldonado for three. Too strong. And the rebound by Nolan Toth. Six point game. Zorich, a stutter step dribble, called for the walk. And the sideline, the coaching staff for Whiting does not agree. Well, Whiting's just going to have to slow down just a little bit. Highland's doing a great job getting back on defense. They have to get, Whiting has to give themselves an opportunity to allow their offense to set. 
Five-point game at the half. Highland led. They're up by six right now. Led by as many as nine. Never trailed. Tough pass to the top there. Onahan got it. Zekovica, three ball, pops out. Rebound by Gendrus. Zekovica's got a game-high 19. Donaldson has 14 for the Oilers. Donaldson off the dribble. Gendrus, baseline J, short. Follows up his own shot, puts it up, no. Kept alive and comes to Zekovica. He'll push it for the Trojans. Goes all the way with a finger roll, can't get it to go. Johnson following it up and he gets fouled and will go to the free throw line. Foul goes on Toth. Instead of playing four guards, it looks like Whiting's going with the two big three guard uh, lineup right now, and I think that's kind of giving Highland some trouble. Johnson had some free throw troubles in the first half, knocks that one down. He has seven points. Looks very smooth on those two free throws. Eight point game. That bounces up over the backboard on the three point attempt by Nolan Toth. It's now a chance for the Trojans to go up by double figures. As they're in search of their first win of the year, they fell to River Forest 59 54, then lost big to Crown Point 84 39 to start the year. Zakavika trying to enter it for Johnson, knocked away, remains Trojan ball. Aldonado, Zekovica, long three. Off the right side of the iron, tapped around in the rebound for Davenport. Zorich, hands it off, Donaldson. Donaldson fires it across the lane. Gendrus throws it up. Not really ready for that pass, it appeared. It was a wild shot. Now Maldonado on the fast break, the lay-in. Good jump stop way to gather himself and make the finish. Rico Maldonado. First bucket for Maldonado today. We've got a timeout called by Whiting. 4.01 left to go in the third quarter. The Trojans got a double figure lead. It's 38 20 night, 38 28. If you're watching game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythe's.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. We'll go back here, 4 0 one to go, third quarter, 38-28. Out of the timeout, it's Oilers basketball, and Isaiah, it's a kind of a dangerous spot right now if you're the Oilers. You're down by double figures. You need to have a little bit of a run here to close out the third quarter. Lots of coaches emphasize that first possession out of a timeout uh, to not turn it over, but to do something positive. And looks like Whiting is doing something positive right now, getting to the free throw line. Second team foul on the Trojans. Generous will go to the free throw line. Four points in the first half for him. And has his first point of the second half here. 38 to 29. We mentioned earlier free throws would be really important this game. Too strong off the back iron. Zekovica has the rebound. Maldonado wanted it in the corner. Zekovica takes the long three. It was halfway down. Bodies from both sides hit the floor, and foul is called on Gendrus on Whiting. That's Indiana basketball for you. Players want it bad. They want it bad. Second team foul on the Oilers. Under out of bounds here for the Trojans. Donaldson with the interception. Little bit of Indiana High School football there, and Donaldson lays it up and in. 
great interception right there, definitely. And then the touchdown score. 16 points for Donaldson. So out of the timeout, three straight for the Oilers, looking for more. Donaldson will miss it. It's a blocking foul. Donaldson did a good job there of more so sideswiping the attempt by Xander Eisen to take a charge. They didn't hit him clean in the chest, so that's why the blocking foul was called. Highland shooting themselves in the foot, uh, passing the ball, very making very long passes right now. They need to shorten their passes and slow down, understand they have the lead. Donaldson misses the first free throw. Sixteen points tonight for Donaldson. Averaging 20 per game to start the year. 0 for 2 at the line, so not able to take advantage. And it stays just a minuscule 3-0 run right now for the Oilers. Timeout call before that ball was taken away. Timeout call by Highland. Three minutes exactly left to go in the third quarter. Highland 38, Whiting 31. Quick break. We'll be right back. This is game night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Start or advance your career at TNB Tube Company. At TNB, employees are more than just a number. They are a valuable part of the success of TNB Tube Company and make an impact every day. Located just a short drive away from Chicago, TNB Tube Company offers benefits such as tuition reimbursement and a community like work atmosphere. To learn more about joining the growing team at TNB Tube Company, visit tbtube.com slash careers. Three minutes to go in the third quarter, 38-31. Highland did lead by 10 a few moments ago. Travel by Xander Isid, an unforced error. See if the Oilers can take advantage of it. Toth, the generous screen. Zorich, back to Toth in the corner for three, yes. His first points. 6-0 run by the Oilers now within four. Whiting's been very close a couple different times in this game. Let's see if they can get over the hump this time around. Yeah, they have never led in this game. Second quarter, they got within one. Had the basketball twice, trying to take the lead, but could not convert. Now with the basketball on the 6-0 run. Toth. Davenport back in there. Gendrus got uh, tripped up and knocked down, and we've got a foul on Highland. I believe on Nick Johnson. Gendrus is going to come out of the game. Checking in is Jeremiah Aller, who had a good stint in the first half and scored five points. 219 left to go in the third. Highland's been stuck on 38 for a while. Zorich to Davenport in the corner. Donaldson now. Out top, Toth. Toth to drive into Zekavika. Bounces out. It was. About halfway down. There's a steal by Davenport. High off the glass, no. The ball caroms over to the sideline, off of Whiting. It'll be Highland ball. Good hustle on both sides, but again, you mentioned Highlands, or excuse me, Whiting's had some opportunities here that they haven't taken advantage of. And see it, two, three chances to get within two, but not able to. Yeah, and things are heating up now. Emotions, a call like that can change the tide really quick. Oh, wow, great hustle. Had a steal, then the ball knocked free again, and now it's going to be out of bounds to Whiting, and Zekavika is slow to get up. That's hustle right there, and this is, this is great. We're going to have a barn burner here. Probably could have had a foul called either way, but in that case, I like the whistle not being blown. That'll drop. It'll count. And a chance for a three-point play for Luke Zorich. We have to remember, it's early on for the referees, too. As we see, they've actually gotten better this game, keeping it 
uh, as the game progressed with their calling being consistent. They've been consistent all along. In the first half, we saw a lot of fouls. This half, we see them playing, allowing the players to play a little bit more. Sorge cannot complete the three-point play, and then Blackman got the rebound and was fouled. But it is now an 8-0 run for the Oilers after they trailed 38-28. Zakavika gets rid of it before the trap comes. Drives the baseline and tried to throw it along the baseline and it got tipped away. Minute 21 left to go in the third. It was 31-26 Highland at halftime. They led 38-28, but the 8-0 run by the Oilers. Zekovica catches, shoots, rebound, batted towards the baseline, and getting it was Godinez, but couldn't finish. Donaldson on the run. Fires it to Allard, pinballs around. He saves it back in. Donaldson takes a three, short. Actually, it was a long two at his toes on the line. 45 seconds left. Blackman floats it up. Got fouled. Seems like both teams are kind of having that football mentality still. I think uh, October isn't too far away for a lot of these teams who both have multiple multi-sport athletes. Blackman will go to the free throw line. It's been a, a, bit, a bit hectic at times here in the third quarter, both teams. Blackman short on the free throw. Genderis is going to come back on for the Oilers. Still a two-point game, and I didn't mark how much time was left when it was 38-28, but it's probably been about five or six minutes since Highland has scored. And it stays that way. A three-pointer can give Whiting its first lead of the night. In the midst of an 8-0 run, Donaldson, Zorich for the lead. Too strong, Gendrus had the rebound, but just kind of lost control of it. Sometimes you're expecting the ball to hit the rim, and it kind of just fell right to him, and he wasn't ready for it. This is a big defensive possession right here for Whiting. I mean, they have Highland in a position where they haven't scored, as you mentioned, but they also have a chance to get some momentum heading into the fourth quarter. So they want to stop uh, Highland right here from getting the basket. Whiting has outscored Highland 10 to seven here in the third quarter. Zekovica fading baseline and wild with it. Two seconds left, Donaldson before the shot traveled. A lot of extra time came off the clock there. They have it at .8. It probably should be at least a second and a half. The official spotted that and see what they put back on. Well, look at that. I nailed it. One and a half seconds left. It's like I've done this before. Blackman will inbound. Zekovica launches and that'll do it for the third quarter. So a low scoring third quarter. Whiting trailed by five at halftime. They end the quarter on an 8-0 run. We make our turn for home here at Whiting. It is Highland 38, Whiting 36. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Start or advance your career at TNB Tube Company. At TNB, employees are more than just a number. They are a valuable part of the success of TNB Tube Company and make an impact every day. Located just a short drive away from Chicago, TMB Tube Company offers benefits such as tuition reimbursement and a community-like work atmosphere. To learn more about joining the growing team at TNB Tube Company, visit tbtube.com/careers.
Hanger Insurance Group in Crown Point is passionate about providing a premier service insurance agency featuring customized coverage and meaningful relationships. They understand that you've built a life and they want to help you protect it. From home to life insurance, they offer a wide variety of coverage to fit your needs. From choosing a plan to filing claims, Hanger Insurance Group agents are ready to help. Stop in for a quote at 950 South Court Street in Crown Point or visit them online at hangerinsurancegroup.com. Protect what you love. Stay with us after the game. We'll name the Proud Union home play of the game. Presented by IKORCC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Most certainly might have a play of the game here in the fourth quarter. A two-point game. Whiting has never led. They trailed by seven after one. Five at halftime. Within two here. Still on an 8-0 run. That's lasted... Over five minutes. Donaldson, pull up, and we're tied at 38. Great possession by Whiting. Taking their time, as we talked about during the break, and executing. 18 points for Donaldson. Zekovica has 19 for Highland. And that's a kick. No steal. Kick ball. It goes back to Highland. And this is going to turn into the most, the biggest possession for Highland this game. They are going to really need a basket to really just take some of the stress off of their defense. And they get a bucket finally, stopping the 10-0 run. Forty to thirty-eight. One minute gone by. Fourth quarter. Gendrus had a slip towards the hoop. Zorich was open there. Gendrus against Johnson spins away. To Davenport, the long two, front rimmed it. Knocked away out of bounds by Toth. It'll be Highland ball. For Whiting, good to see Angel Roman come on. I believe we saw him playing in the JV game earlier today. He's come on for Whiting. Getting some time here in the fourth quarter. Johnson. Out to Zekovica, hop step in the lane. Ison pulls up just inside the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Allard. Three ball for the lead, and it's good. Nolan Toth gives Whiting its first lead of the game at 41 to 40. Get some energy in the Whiting gymnasium tonight. And turned over by Highland. From down 38 to 28, a 13 to 2 run by the Oilers. Donaldson takes the 17 footer, spins out, but Chandris got the offensive rebound. Great rebound by the big man. And great patience by Whiting, understanding they have a lead now. Now they're playing with money. Donaldson to the corner, Toth again. That time can't get it to go, and the rebound by Zekovica. Maldonado for three, almost banked it in, went off the hands of Roman. Johnson loses it to the floor, Donaldson with it. Donaldson to Allard, who was not looking. Donaldson gets the soft bounce off the rim. Mid-range dead eye. That young man, he has a perfect shot from mid-range. He's been shooting very well today. Right at his season average, exactly 20 points today. Three-point Oiler lead. 15-2, the run, and now a walk. From Isa, tra uh, the travel, and it's turned over to Whiting. Tough mental error right there by Isa. And as you mentioned, Isaiah, the, now with this lead, Whiting doesn't have to force anything, but Donaldson, the big burst of the hoop, got free. Couldn't finish, though. 
Zekovica into the lane. Great move. Can't flip it up and in, though. Gets it back. No, he stepped, he stepped on the baseline. He and can't it, believe it. And as we saw Donaldson drive that last possession, that's the one disadvantage of taking Eisen out of the game. His lateral quickness on defense has been slowing Donald down quite a bit early on in this one. We'll keep it here during this timeout. 424 left to go in the fourth quarter. Whiting in the midst of the 15 to two run to go from down 38-28 to up 43 to 40. Eight points in the second half for Donaldson, 20 for the game. The second leading scorer for the Oilers in this one is Toth with six. And all six of those points coming here in the second half, including the three-pointer that gave Whiting its first lead of the game. Zekovica leading the way for the Trojans with 19 points. Nick Johnson has checked in with 10 for the Trojans. And we'll see what Highland, well, they're going to be on defense here coming out of the timeout, but 424 left, and their offense has gone cold with only a total of nine points in the second half. And it's been tough, and, but you really have to credit it toward Whiting's pressure. At halftime, they made that adjustment to bring some more pressure into Highland, and it's worked. Donaldson, Toth, Allard, Gendrus, and Zorich on the floor. Or check that Roman on the floor. Highland gets the stop. Zekovica gets in the lane. Throws it up and in off the glass. <laughs> now you see him, now you don't. Kiki Zekovica <laughs> with the circus move. 21 points now for him. This is a foul on the Trojans. And now Zorich will return to the game, replacing Roman, the sophomore. Seeing some time in the varsity game after playing for the JV team earlier. Donald's in the basketball. And look for, look for Wyden to continue to isolate him. Donaldson. Gendrus. Allard goes to work. Got doubled. Now Gendrus. Back out Zorich. Guarded by Maldonado. Gendrus from the corner. The long two is good. Seven points for Joe Gendrus. Three-point lead for Whiting. Zekovic and Maldonado. Onahan for three for the tie. Front iron and the rebound in traffic. Gendrus and they're able to reach in, cause the tie up, and the possession arrow will give it back to Highland. So that's a key moment potentially in this game here. Highland getting another chance down by three with 2.52 to go. Definitely. And right here, they're going to have to either find Zekovic on the outside or Johnson on the inside. Really, the only two options here. Zekovica from the outside is the answer here, tying the game at 45. And let's mark that down. That might be a key play right there, that rebound, getting it back, and finding Zekovica in the corner again. Zekovica now with 24 points. Zorich can't give Whiting the lead back with a rebound, finds Toth, and he has had a couple of huge shots. He had the three-pointer. That gave the Oilers the lead for the first time, and now the putback puts them back on top. All eight of his points here in the second half. Johnson out to Blackman. Two minutes to play. Johnson, Blackman eyes the rim. Johnson again, rolls right. The hook shot is good. Another tie here at 47. 
Back-to-back -back possessions. They find Zekavika and they find Johnson. I mean, that, that is what they're going to have to do. Those are the two mismatches they have against Whiting. So look for them to expose those for the rest of this game. Turned over by Whiting. Highland will take the basketball. Tied at 47. Made it 25 left in the fourth quarter. Highland has led for the vast majority of this game. They call three in the key. Yeah. Turnover by Highland. It was 38-28. Highland early on third quarter. We're now tied at 47. Whiting took its first lead here in the fourth quarter on an Olin toe three-pointer. Been tied at 45 and now tied at 47. Donaldson for three. That's good. Big time three-point basket with just under a minute remaining. 23 points for Donaldson. The answer is no good. Maldonado can't save it. And the ball goes out of bounds to Whiting. And Whiting will call a timeout, but the Donaldson three-pointer a few moments ago could end up being our proud Union home play of the game. Right now, it stands to be that as it's 50 to 47 with 50 seconds left, but we'll see if Whiting now can, uh, can close the door on Highland. Now, of course, Isaiah no shot clock, Indiana High School basketball, 50 seconds left. Whiting has the ball, they're up by three. What do you think the strategy is gonna be really on both sides here? Look at the fouls, the next foul does put Whiting at the line for a one and one, and neither team has really shot the free throw all that well today, but Whiting uh, has been less successful, let's say. And I think there's only one answer for Whiting right now. Get the ball in Donaldson's hand, clear out, and if Highland wants to guard him, Watch out, because he's going to try to get to the basket in this possession. Full court pressure, as you'd expect from Highland here. And Donaldson got tripped up, but not terrible for Highland. You go for the steal. You're aggressive. Now it's a one and one. Donaldson's missed a couple of free throws. Yeah, I like that foul. It's early. You know, you give yourself an opportunity to react to whatever happens right here. So Donaldson will go to the line. He's got 23 points. Three-pointer a few moments ago. Put his team up by three. A chance to get this to a two-possession game. 24 now for Donaldson. Largest lead that the Oilers have had. Two big free throws for Donaldson. 25 points, five points is the lead. Zekavika wants the ball. Johnson puts it up short. Rebound, Gendrus. They got a foul, they do. Zekavika looks frustrated. He doesn't touch the ball during that possession. And uh, I think you gotta get the ball in his hands at some point during that time with the ball. Yeah, he was in the corner wide open. I mean, one skip pass, maybe a, a pass fake in the middle, pass it to him. You got to get the ball to a high hand this game. One and one. And Toth continues to be a big part of the second half with nine second half points. 33 seconds is still a lot of time, but Highland's going to have to get going right after this play. One for two. Toth keeping it alive. At the very least, wastes a few extra seconds off the clock. Fifty-three forty-seven. 
Maldonado is a good three-point shooter. Let the defender fly by. Zach Vika kept it alive, but the rebound, Toth, and a foul on Highland. Still going to be one and one here with 20.1 left. Great persistence by Whiting all game long. I mean, they we, you mentioned it a couple times. They sniffed and they sniffed and they scratched and they clawed and they finally came back. And now they're doing what needed to be done. And we talked about it, free throws. A couple of minutes into the third quarter, they were down 38-28, called a timeout. Eventually put together a slow run. It was 3-0 for a couple of minutes, then 5-0 and 8-0 eventually. They they took the lead, a 14-2 run, and from down 10 to up 7 right now. And this guy at the free throw line has been a key part of it with 11 second half points. Desperation time for the Trojans. It'll be Oiler ball. Nope, nope, it'll be Trojan ball. That ball was deflected on the shot. 13 seconds left, eight point game. Zakaveka, the three, gets it. And the time wastes off about three seconds that should not have. So they're gonna go figure that out. That's 27 points for Zakavika, 55-50, and there should be about, well, they only went to 9.2. I don't really know about that, but that's all they'll be left, 9.2. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts. And Highland, they, they're coached very well. They're going to bounce back from this game, but they're, they're going to go back and see. When you got a high hand, whoever it is that night, you got to get it into his hand. And all right, I feel comfortable enough to award the play of the game here, 55-50 with 9.2 seconds left. The Proud Union home play of the game presented by IKORCC. I'm going to go with the Sean Donaldson three-pointer that came with about a minute left in the fourth quarter. Gave uh, the, uh, the the Oilers a 50-47 to lead after the game was tied at 45 and tied at 47. Donaldson hitting the corner three. We'll give that the Proud Union home play of the game. Brought to you by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. We still have to name a... Lantern Man superhero of the game. We'll do that, though, once this game officially wraps up. As one of our candidates, for sure, is going to head to the free throw line here. You know, that being said, Donaldson somewhat doing what we thought he would do. He averaged 20 points over the first two games. He's got 25 right now. Obviously a great performance, but I've been mentioning Nolan Toth, all of his points here in the second half, all 11 of his points, a couple of big three-pointers, made some free throws, so maybe I'm actually talking myself into giving him the, uh, the award today just because of, you know, right place, right time when the team needed it. Yeah, definitely, and you, you hit it right on the head. It, that performance in the second half, it was huge. Donaldson. Couple more free throws. 57-50. Four seconds left. Zekovica comes up short. Nothing for him to be ashamed about today as he ends up scoring 27 points, as does Sean Donaldson in this game. And the final score, Whiting 57, Highland 50. The come from behind victory for the Oilers. They didn't take their first lead until the fourth quarter they trailed 38 to 28, and they come back, and it ends up being a 17-point turnaround from the midway point, approximately, of the third quarter to the end of the game to win this 57-50. And uh, you were saying it a couple of times here. You know, they they had their opportunities, kind of go by the wayside, uh, but eventually they started to take advantage, and they had no quit in them here tonight. Definitely, and that, that they you hit it right on the head right there. <laughs> No quit. No quit. They play hard. That's Indiana basketball for you. You know you're going to have to come prepared to play every night, no big, no matter how big or small the school is. And that's what Whiting did tonight. They performed very well. Tough for Highland. They fall to 0-3 where it looked like they were going to get their first win of the year. It's time to name the Crowell Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. You know, I talked myself into him. I'm going to go with Nolan Toth. He scores 
all of his points in the second half, 11 points. The three-pointer that, at the time, gave Whiting its first lead of the game, made a three-pointer earlier, had a couple of offensive rebounds, some free throws. Of course, you know, Donaldson, Zekovica, they each scored 27 in this game, but uh, I'm giving it to Toth. I guess I didn't really give you a vote, Isaiah. Yeah, and I think Toth, it, he deserves it. I mean... If anything, it might be a tie, but we'll give it to Tote because that's a big performance, making that adjustment at halftime and then coming out and executing. That was the biggest thing, the execution he showed in that second half, and it was well worth it. Crowd companies have offices open from 9 to 7, Monday through Friday and Saturdays till 2 in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. So Toth, uh, Nolan Toth here, super hero of the game in this one today. I think that, uh, that wraps up everything we need to get through here on the, uh, the post-game show. We have one more. Oh, here we are. We do have one more. Somewhere in our... Yeah, it says baseball, but hey, whatever, we'll just do We'll just do it. Boilermakers Local 374, Blue Collar Player of the Game. Well, I guess I could have given that to Toth and then maybe given the Superman... Uh, super hero of the game uh, to Donaldson. But, I'm actually uh, what do you want to go? Yeah, interrupt right yeah, here. So we're actually going to give that to Kiki Zekavika. He played his go. heart out I like tonight. That. Yeah. 27 Good points call. and big time threes. You know, big time threes exactly when Highland needed it to give them that jump at the beginning of the game. Unfortunately, late in the game, Whiting's defense really hit him so where Highland just didn't couldn't find him on the court. So Give it to him, though. He played his heart out. Great game, and he's going to have a heck of a season. Blue-collar player of the game. Brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. And earn while you learn with Boilermakers Local 374. Okay, I think that now gets us through everything we need to cover here. The final score, Whiting 57, Highland 50. As we want to thank everybody that helped us out today. Executive producer Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer Nathan Laird, Claude Martinez, our producer, Milton Johnson on the camera. A big thanks to Whiting Athletic, Dire Dire uh, athletic Director. I forgot how to talk here at the end of the game, at least. Uh, Sissy Bendinelli here at the Whiting High School. And uh, thank you to our viewers on Facebook.com slash Region Sports, YouTube.com slash Region Sports, and Region Sports. Dot com. For my broadcast partner, Isaiah Gransberry, I'm Scott Sudikoff saying so long from Whiting High School. We're once again the final score, Whiting 57, Highland 50. Thank you for watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.